a large model showman's engine. This is part 25. Removing old paint, starting to make the motion guard side plates and cleaning the chimney inside and out. I removed the injector assembly, thoroughly washed it in cold water and now it's back in a liquid, but this time it's lacquer thinner, or as I call it, cellulose thinners. And this will just cause the paint to fall off. The paint's quite badly chipped, so it's time for a repaint. This morning, a parcel arrived from Blackgate's Engineering, and it contained all of the brass parts that I ordered, including a tub of this stuff. It's called Friar Lux Paint, which is basically finely ground solder mixed with a suitable flux. And you just paint it on the parts you want to solder, then gently heat the parts until the solder melts, and that's it. The job's done. The reason for leaving the tub of Friar Lux paint on screen for such a long time is so you can read the instructions. In this episode, I'm going to bend the ends of two of the brass plates, so why did I order three? I know I mentioned in a previous episode that maths wasn't my strong point, but I did order three on purpose. I need to bend the ends of two of these brass plates, and if I make a mess of one of them, at least I have another one to have a go at. And OK, if I do successfully bend, two of the sheets of brass, I'll have one left to go into my box of brass parts. This is my old, very small set of bending rollers. As I turn the handle, the bottom two rollers rotate, and the top one can be adjusted to put pressure onto the work. Here I'm giving it a bit of a clean, and I'm also oiling it because I haven't oiled it for years. I'm trying very hard not to put any oil on the surface of the rollers, because it's a friction between the bottom rollers and the metal that makes this sheet of brass go back and forth. This job is actually quite tricky, more difficult than it looks. I've had to be very careful that I put the piece of brass sheet into the rollers perfectly square. And here you see the principle. I tighten down the top roller against the brass. Not too tight, generally speaking, one turn of the allen bolts that adjust the top roller will be sufficient for each pass. Then by rotating the handle at the end, I move the piece of brass sheet back and forth until it's bent like this. I need the bend to be at 90 degrees to the main plate, so it's very important not to overbend the brass sheet. If I carry on, it will just end up as a thin tube. Like any other job in the workshop, you need to practice to do this correctly. And here's the result when I bent both of them and put them together, and the bends are identical. Well, near enough anyway. At least the bends are perfectly square to the brass sheet. If you put the brass sheet in crooked, then the bends are not too good. The narrow strips of brass that came in the parcel are going to be soft-soldered to the top and bottom of these side protectors. Why is it that showman's engines generally have these side protectors in place? It's to stop people getting their hands in the motion, because a lot of the time showman's engines were in very public places. And why do showman's engines also have solid flywheels instead of the spoke type that you find on most other types of traction engines? I think it's just a safeguard so members of the public don't get caught up in the mechanism. But I also think it's something to do with these fire-breathing monsters not frightening horses as they go down the road. Time to take a look at the injector, which is in the tub of cellulose thinners. And as you can see, the paint's fallen off, more or less. With a bit of help from my electric toothbrush, the paint just comes off the metal parts. Doing it this way is far easier than shot blasting, or some other ways of removing old paint, such as paint stripper, which is very nasty stuff. I'm going to put it back into the mixture because some of the paint hasn't yet dissolved. So while this is happening, I'm going to do another job. I'm going to clean up this nicely made copper top of the chimney. As the chimney itself does unbolt from the saddle on the smoke box, I could have removed it completely and used my polishing spindle to polish every inch of it up and make it really shine. But quite frankly, I think this is a waste of time, because as soon as the engine is put back into steam, the copper top will go dull again. That's why I'm using Brasso wadding and a cloth. This is not perfect, but it's shiny enough. Another alternative is this stuff. It's very, very fine steel wool. A viewer from Australia sent me this stuff to try, and I use it quite frequently. It's very good. A little bit more abrasive than Brasso wadding. And here is the end result of using the wire wool 
followed by the Brasso wadding, and I think this is more than good enough. I can't quite get to the bit right at the bottom near the wood on the canopy, but I can live with that. This part on the bench is the chimney extension. It's a push fit in the top of the chimney. It allows the smoke and steam to just be above the head of the driver when the engine's been driven on the road. The inside of this short extension tube and the chimney itself are covered in a thick coat of steam oil and soot. So I'm just knocking up something to scrape off the steam oil and soot. I drew around the bottom of the chimney extension, but I cut very much on the inside of the line because I don't want this piece of wood to be a tight fit in the chimney. And here you can see why. I just move it up and down, and at every pass it's scraping soot and steam oil off the inside of the tube. You could make one of these for any size of locomotive. If you look down the chimneys of most 5-inch gauge locomotives, you will often see a similar coating of steam oil, soot and ash on the inside of the chimney. And this is not a good thing because you need to get the exhaust out of the chimney without it meeting resistance on the way up there. When I steamed this in the garden by putting the extension tube in the chimney, my hands got very greasy and very sooty made worse by the fact that the engine was over-oiling to quite an extent. Hopefully now I've reduced the amount of oil that is coming out of the lubricator, things should improve slightly anyway. Whilst working on the lights, when I was running the engine in the workshop, quite a lot of oil was pouring into the smoke box, so I'm hoping this situation will improve. Once again by using some wire wool, brasso wadding, followed by a cloth, the brass ring around the chimney extension is looking good too. Now with 99.9% .9 of the old red paint removed from the injector, it's time to paint on some etching primer. This is very good stuff and because it has an acid in it, it really bites into the metal. I left it to dry for quite a while, then I gave it a top coat of some Crimson Lake paint. This is Phoenix Precision Paints Crimson Lake, which thankfully is almost a perfect match with the existing Crimson Lake that the body of the engine is painted with. As you can see, I've put plenty of it on. It shouldn't drip with a bit of luck. These parts should look quite good once the paint has levelled off, which this type of paint tends to do as it dries. And that concludes this episode. I'd just like to say, as always, stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back, making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.